scenario? I hope I'm in heaven with God. I hope I'm in heaven with God. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good answer. What makes you say hope? I don't know. I just try to do things right. You know, I'm not perfect, but. Yeah. I try to follow God, but, you know, sometimes you get led astray. Put it on a percentage scale. Zero percent, you die and go straight to hell. hundred percent, you get into heaven. Where do you feel like you comfortably fall? Oh, probably 85, 90 percent. If me and you got up in a plane. I said, hey, man, we're going to just skydive or jump out of a plane for fun. I said, but don't worry. It's an 85% chance your parachute going to open. <laughs> would you be a little concerned? Probably, yeah. Yeah, I would too. I wouldn't want to make sure that my parachute was 100%, right? Yeah. It's best as you knew, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, even more importantly, I think, is when you jump out into eternity one day, you don't want to be 85% because eternity is just too long to be wrong, right? Yeah. You have any idea how to, based on what the Bible says, can determine how you can be 100%, you know how God is gonna qualify what that is? Following him. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so how did you come up with the 85% standard? Is that something you came up with? Do you think it's God's standard? Do you think it's both, or where you feel like it? No, I don't, I don't know, just <laughs> whatever. That's kinda how I feel, I don't know. Okay, so let me show you his standard. You ever heard specifically what Jesus said about it? No. So I'll give you his standard. You ever heard of the Ten Commandments? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Well, this is where he's going to use to determine where you, you get into heaven. And I'm not here to judge you, man. I promise you I'm not. I, I, I point fingers, man. I got three chocolate fingers pointing back at me. So. <laughs> so so, let me give you the good person test, and then you kind of see what your percentage is. And not, not for me to judge you, okay? So, uh, Mr. Cro Cos Cosby, yeah. how many lies have you told in your life combined? Oh, God, I don't know. <laughs> I definitely can't keep up with mine. Exactly. <laughs> uh, have you stolen anything? Yes. Me too. All of us. Jesus said, if you look at someone with lust, you commit adultery in your heart. Is anything to do with sex outside of the way God designed it? Like, sex is supposed to be like fire in the fireplace. As long as you just keep fire in the fireplace, it's good. You take that fire, put it on the carpet, it burns your house down. Yeah. Uh, so as long as sex stays in marriage, it's good. You take outside of marriage in any kind of way. That's what the Bible says, we commit the, the sin of adultery. Yeah. All right? Guilty or not guilty? No, not guilty. Not guilty, all right. Not guilty. All right. <laughs> you ever looked at someone with lust? Oh, yeah. I'm, I have to. I mean, I have. I mean, it's just, all right. Uh, you ever use God's name in vain? Yes. All right, me too. What letters in the middle of the word sin? I. All right, so anytime I do what I want to do, instead of what God has told me to do, who do you just put over God? Ourselves. All right, one more. This may surprise you. Have you ever been angry at somebody, you almost feel like you can put some pain on them. Oh, yeah. We cousins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any idea what the Bible equates that commandment with? Uh, that we break. Oh, God. That's all right. I got you black, man. I mean, you're back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you see it, man, because this is, this blew my mind when I seen it myself. First John chapter 3, verse 15. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. So you ever been like mad at somebody? You feel like you can kind of hurt them? Or oh, yeah. Put, yeah. So that the Bible says that that's, that's almost like murdering somebody, even though it's different when it comes to the world. But on God's standard, man, it's almost like you just took their life, you know? Yeah. All right. So if you look at your resume, if you were to stand before God tonight. He just judged you based on his standard. Uh, Miss Cosby, do you think you'll be innocent or guilty? When you stand before him, you're guilty. All right, so what do you think he's gonna do to you if you stood before him guilty? Probably he's gonna send me to hell. Which makes sense. Yeah. Because he's high, he's holy, right? Yeah. He can't. I mean, he can't let sin go unpunished. You yeah. have any idea who killed Jesus? It was the Romans. Romans? Great answer. You may be surprised by this. Did you know you killed Jesus, and I killed Jesus because he went to the cross? For us. For sin. Yeah. So you got people in your family that you love. Mm -hmm. If somebody was to harm or, God forbid, take the life of somebody in your family, they couldn't pay you enough to escape your wrath. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Exactly. You're coming for them. Oh, yeah. Well, if we kill Jesus, tell me how many good things can you do that you can give God after what you did to his son? Nothing. Nothing. So the Bible says we all, we've earned the death penalty. You ever heard this, like a famous Bible passage that says, for the wages of sin is death. Yes. Like God is going to pay you with what you earn, and that's the death penalty. 
If we kill his son, we pretty much earn death. Does that bother you, man, that if you die today that you will go to hell? Oh, yeah. All right. I, it bothers me. I don't even know you, but I love you, and I don't want you to go to hell. <laughs> All right? So do you know what God did for guilty sinners so they won't have to go to hell? you have any idea what he did? You repent and ask for forgiveness. Put your, put your heart in Jesus. You're on track, brother. You're on track. But you still go to hell. Let me tell you why. If a murderer stands before the judge and says, I killed a bunch of people, you know, can I do some community service hours? Oh, yeah, they ain't gonna it's happen. just not going to happen. No. Well, I think you are, you're in a ballpark. But you know what you really need is God's mercy. Yeah. Now, let me tell you how you get God's mercy, and then I'll be finished. Let me give you an illustration. Here's what God did, even though we're, we're, we're guilty. 2,000 years ago, the Bible says that God loved us so much that he sent his son, Jesus. We broke the law. He sent Jesus to pay the fine for the sin of the world. So let's just say you were charged with like a, a billion dollars worth of speeding tickets. Could you pay them off? Oh, heck no. No. <laughs> but if Bill Gates had mercy on you, <laughs> yeah. he comes in and pays your fine, now the judge can do what? You can clear your record. You can clear your record. He can let you go. Yeah. Well, based on what Jesus did on the cross, when he sent his son, God sent his son, God can clear our debt, not based on what you can do, but based on what he did on the cross. Yeah. And he's willing to cover your debt if you be willing to transfer your trust from yourself to the Savior. Mm -hmm. If you do that, it's almost like you're, you've been doing what I was doing for a long time. You're, it's like you're jumping out of a plane trying to flap your arms, trying to save yourself by mm -hmm. being good and performance. Man, that's going to wear you out. Yeah. Nobody can sustain that. But Jesus is the parachute. If you transfer your trust from yourself to the Savior, like you trust in the parachute, man, you don't have to try to flap your arms. Yeah. Well, Jesus is the parachute. If you believe in what he did on the cross, give up your life to follow him, then the Bible says God will let you go. He'll give you the free gift. It's not something you can earn. It's just something that he earned for you, and he's willing to give it to you as a gift. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what the difference between a gift and a wage is? You don't have to work for one of them. Yeah. One is he's freely giving it. Yeah. The other one is a wage. You have to work for it. Work for it. Well, God is willing to give you a gift because he knew you couldn't earn it. That's yeah. how much he loved you. And man, for God so loved the world that he gave his son that whoever believe in him, they won't perish. And so if you'll be willing to, to surrender to that, man, God will have mercy on you because either one of two things are going to happen, Mr. Cosby. Either you're going to pay for your sin in hell mm -hmm. or you're going to let Jesus pay for it on the cross. Yeah. And so if you'll be willing to just tell God, best you know how, Surrender to him best you know how. He'll have mercy on you. And he'll let you go. And he'll start a relationship with you. Give you new affections and new desires. And just pretty much based on what he did. Yeah. All right. So what you thinking right now? Oh. I mean, I've, I've done this. Still in the journey. but On the journey? Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. I want to close the illustration. Because I was on a journey, too, until I actually made that commitment. Can I use your Can I use Can I somebody hold this real quick? Can I, can I use your hand real quick? Like, let's just say today, like you are like, man, I'm ready to put it as best I know how. You lock on to Jesus. I'm, I'm gonna play playing Jesus, but I'm gonna lock on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you do it. Well, as soon as you tell God, God, as best I know how, I'm ready to follow you. Well, when you surrender and say, God, I'm sorry, I'm ready to forgive me for what I've done. I'm not just ready to go to heaven. I want Jesus. You married, right? Mm -hmm. If your wife only wanted to marry you because you had money. And you find that out. Oh, that wasn't the case. That wasn't the case. <laughs> <laughs> but if she only wanted you for your money, man, you're not going to want to be with her. Yeah, I know. But if she wants you for you, she gets you and your money. Yeah. A lot of people just want to go to heaven, but they don't really want Jesus. They just want what he got. You get Jesus and say, God, I want you, then you automatically get what? You get his heaven. Yeah. And if you'll just tell God that, man, you re be sorry, man, God will lock on you. Now, who's more faithful? To the relationship. You are Jesus. Jesus. So there's going to be times you let go. Mm -hmm. But the reason why you don't get into heaven is not because of you calling him Jesus. It's because of what? That's what you need, man. So you're not going to be able to really follow Jesus until he locks on to you like a father. I got three kids. They break stuff around the house all the time. Who keeps paying for it? You do. Yeah. <laughs> Will they ever do enough bad for me to lose that relationship? Oh, no. 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 I may spank them, but I'm never going to kick them out. Exactly. But man, once you say Jesus... I'm in. He locks on, man. You're 100%. You never have to worry about losing. But now he takes personal responsibility for his son. Red light, I don't want to follow Jesus. Yellow light says, man, let me think about this. I don't know if I'm really ready to go all in. 
And Greenland says, man, I'm ready to repent. And I'm ready to follow Jesus. Even though I don't understand everything, I'm just ready for him to lock on to me. Where do you feel like he kind of is? In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 What do you think, brother? It's good. Thank you, man. Yeah. I appreciate you. No problem. Thank All right. You. What do you think, brother? No, it's good. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, really? Thanks for coming. Thank you, man. I appreciate y'all. I hope y'all enjoy. Yeah, thank you. Enjoy this, man. Thank you. You got anything at all? No, that's no, good, though. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, thank y'all for letting, letting, letting us come, man.